welcome to today's lecture. We will continue discussing on the carbonic uh, fluid inclusions and uh, their use and uh, what uh, the information that we retrieve from them. We just discussed about the uh, density, the, the carbonic inclusions, their behavior to uh, microthermometric experiments, calculation of the volumetric properties, the density and the isocore. Now, let us see this, uh, the, consider the situation as to how we can use the data of this carbonic inclusions for thermobarometry. In fact, it is uh, it becomes much uh, easier or in this case we will uh, consider the thermobarometric exercise. Thermobarometry essentially we mean that we should be in a position to uh, determine the deduce the temperature and pressure condition of entrapment. So, here this is a schematic diagram on which the such kind of a thermobarometric exercise has been shown and as, as is the uh, heading here, it is a method of intersecting isocores. Isocores again to reiterate that they are the path of constant density, constant composition and through which the inclusion has retained its volume has remained as a closed system and evolved in PT space. So, this diagram here is uh, drawn with both carbon dioxide and the water unary system combined together. This is the this is water where it is liquid field of water and this is the vapor field of water and here it is also the liquid of carbon dioxide and this vapor and we know the supercritical region. So, here what we uh, see here that uh, these are the isocores uh, of course, this is only one drawn, but we can also have many more of such isocores for this uh, liquid inclusions also. So, the condition is that we must have coeval pure aqueous and pure carbonic inclusions. If we remember then on the uh, binary of H 2 and CO 2, we know that the, the solvers is like this and this is the this corresponds to any particular uh, pressure uh, and uh, this is temperature and this is the mole fraction of carbon dioxide. We know that this is the one phase, one phase liquid and this is two phase that is the aqueous liquid plus a carbonic liquid or a carb or carbon carbon dioxide could be in vapor depending on where which region we are in. So, in the correspond situation corresponding to this two phase condition in which there will be an aqueous liquid and a carbonic liquid that means, the fluid that we are considering is in a heterogeneous state. But as, as before as, as per our assumption the entrapment is homogeneous means the host mineral which is growing in presence of the fluid will trap either the carbon di carbonic liquid or the aqueous liquid not a mixture of both. So, under that circumstance what we will see what we will see there that like as before if this is a host mineral let us say quartz. So, within that there is one inclusion this is a 
let us say this is an aqueous biphase inclusion and this is a carbonic biphase inclusion. This need not necessarily have to be biphase, it could also be a monophase, but it should at least give rise to a vapor on cooling a few degrees from the room temperature and we should be able to note down the T H liquid vapor for this particular inclusion and also calculate the density in turn. Similarly, we should also be similarly this is the aqueous biphase and we also should have determined the T H liquid vapor homogenization and also it is a salinity and then that would have made that would have allowed us to calculate the sum the density that is the rho at T H. Similarly, this also the density at rho at rho as T H. So, these inclusions these two SS necessarily have to satisfy the condition of coevality means they must have been trapped at the same time by the growing crystal as a part of the three dimensional network or may be that if they are on a particular hill uh, crack representing one particular generation of entrapment of a secondary fluid that also could be possible, but the first case is uh, more appropriate or is mostly considered. And in this case this both aqueous liquid this aqueous liquid biphase inclusion and the carbonic biphase inclusion were trapped at the same time for the coeval. So, once I have the density for these two inclusions known I can plot the one can plot the uh, isocore of the aqueous this is the isocore of the aqueous inclusion. And suppose I have this uh, this uh, dot this line this part the line this is this, this is line 1 and this is line 2 are corresponding to inclusion 1 and inclusion 2 here. So, then if if the so as as expected since carbon dioxide will is a lower density uh, fluid lower density liquid here compared to the aqueous liquid of a specified weight percent NaCl then the aqueous liquid isocore is likely to have a steeper dp by dt slope compared to one which is for the carbonic liquid. So, they are definitely going to intersect in space if we extend the isocore because once we know this uh, once the temperature of homogenization this is for the liquid aqueous liquid inclusion this is for the carbon inclusion known and the isocores are constructed and the isocore are intersecting at this particular point. So, the point at which the isocores are intersecting will uniquely define the pressure and temperature condition of formation of this particular mineral as well as the temperature and pressure of the fluid. Now, the situation is that uh, in a uh, in a situ in in a particular grain, there may be uh, several such instances, or in in the in course of study of the samples taken from the the entity that we are interested in, an exposure from a rock exposure or from a, a mineralized vein or anything of our interest, then we would have done such such kind of and these these inclusions which would have classified in the beginning as. Uh, Categorized according to the, the way the scheme that we have followed, the such coexistence is noticed in many different instances that you can have several such intersection points. If we if we take all the inclusions, equation all all such coeval pair of equation carbonic inclusions, then we can plot them on the PT space and can get the uh, complete spectrum of evolution of the fluid in terms of the pressure and temperature. So this is one of the uh, practices which are commonly followed in fluid inclusion thermobarometry. Okay. So, from the uh, pure carbonic inclusion the logically we should switch over to situations which are the mixed aqueous carbonic inclusion where uh, if we can if you remember it is basically it is the aqueous liquid this is the carbonic liquid and this is the carbonic vapor.
we have understood uh, the entrapment condition temperature and pressure condition in relation to phase diagram phase relations in uh, water CO2 system where the water is not a pure water as, as we consider them as pseudo binaries a water of a fixed NaCl weight percent can be uh, can be understood or the phase behavior of that particular water in relation to carbon dioxide as to what is the mutual solubility or miscibility between them can be studied as uh, pseudo binaries and we know them that exactly from the series of diagrams we saw before we know what are the miscible regime and what are the immiscible regime and occurrence of such kind of aqueous carbonic inclusions commonly as it as encountered in many environments. So, now we will see the response of these inclusions to a freezing cycle, freezing warming cycle. This, carbon, this, uh, this is the aqueous liquid and this aqueous liquid is likely to or is supposed to be responding the way which we have seen for the aqueous biphase inclusions pure aqueous biphase inclusions where we know it can be explained on the basis of the binary and the supercooling and the things which we have discussed before. Now, the difference is that this aqueous liquid has got a carbonic liquid and a carbonic vapor within that and the pressure and temperature at which the inclusion is the temperature of course, room temperature and the pressure at which the inclusion is is basically decided by the vapor pressure of carbon dioxide at that particular temperature because both liquid and vapor are there. Now, if we freeze this inclusion what we should expect we would expect that this aqueous part to freeze first and as we know it will require supercooling and this aqueous part suppose if I say that it is a 10 weight or 5 weight percent NSL equivalent then it is supposed to solidify at temperature anywhere between minus 20 to minus 2.5 or so. But the, as we know it will not do so it will require it will require supercooling for that to become solidified. We know that this solidification temperature or the triple point of carbon dioxide is minus 56.6 ideally also this liquid this carbon dioxide liquid plus vapor should solidify at that temperature, but that will also not happen because of the supercooling that will be required. So, now when we freeze this temperature freeze this inclusion let us say we see if what happens at minus 50 degrees Celsius. Suppose this aqueous part which should have solidified corresponding to the ice uh, liquid cotectic at some point between minus uh, 2.5 or so or the eutectic of minus 20.2 will not do so and it will it will solidify completely become frozen at about minus 50. So, that time because of the expansion of this uh, solidification of this uh, aqueous part this carbonic the boundary between the carb carbon dioxide liquid and the aqueous liquid will become diffuse. And but still we will be able to see the vapor within that. This vapor of course, would not be executing much of a pseudo Brownian movement because the temperature has been much low and the uh, there is no much of thermal agitation for the vapor to move inside. Now, this, this corresponds to a temperature which is about minus 100. Now, what has happened in that this particular liquid carbon dioxide part has solidified and has become a solid like a half moon shaped uh, solid uh, ice which is distinctly white in color and this dark part is actually the vapor which is distorted in its shape because of the solidification of this liquid carbon dioxide, but has not the volume has not uh, decreased, but it would rather have slightly increased because of this is because of the positive dp by dt slope in case of carbon dioxide. So, if we uh, so this is the state in which the inclusion is completely frozen. Now, let us warm up warm the inclusion warp at a controlled heating rate and then as and when we are approaching about minus 57 or so this solid carbon dioxide is it will start melting. And if we keep the minus 56 with the temperature fixed at about minus 56.6 we will see that this particular carbon dioxide has melted and has come back to the liquid plus vapor situation. Now, this is a situation which, which is shown at minus 5. So, minus 5 is uh, a situation where let us say depending on the uh, weight percent NSL equivalent of this, this has become uh, this last ice in this particular liquid phase also melted and it has kind of come back to its original uh, composition of the liquid composition that we started with. 
and then we are again increasing the temperature and so let us say there is a temperature of about 8.5 and this is this description is absolutely a very schematic it is a uh, it will usually uh, whenever we do work on a carb aqueous carburing inclusion this behavior is definitely expected keeping aside the possibilities of metastability which can lead us to anything it, it the metastability could be such that this inclusion does not even respond to even minus 196 degree celsius and those are uh, those are exceptional cases but i am this this description is absolutely ideal as it would be expected in a heating freezing cycle, freezing heating cycle for a carbonic aqueous carbonic inclusion. So, why I am showing it at my 8.5? So, when the temperature is about 8.5 degree Celsius, I could see that this inclusion is now coming back to exactly the shape or the kind of uh, phase combination the from where we started. The situation is as compared to the situation at minus 5, where the meniscus of the liquid water and the liquid carbon dioxide is still very diffused and distorted or in a deformed state. Suddenly, I find that this particular meniscus has become very clear and the bubble with the carbon dioxide vapor bubble is also started to execute the pseudo Brownian movement. So, this temperature is something which is very significant. Now, at, uh, at 10 degrees, uh, okay, this is about uh, 10 degrees Celsius. Now, why this 10 degrees Celsius corresponds to a temperature of liquid vapor homogenization of the so the partial homogenization of the carbonic part. Here I see that the carbonic liquid and the vapor homogenized into a single phase. So, L plus V to L this has happened at 10 degree Celsius and now this inclusion is heated uh, to higher temperature and let us say at around 275 degree Celsius I see that this has become a uh, single phase carbon again single phase inclusion. Now, what has happened here? If we remember the situation what we uh, which we uh, illustrated that this particular in case of a liquid plus vapor biphase situation in this situation also this is the carbonic part this is the carbonic part and this is the aqueous part and the homogenization the way it is happening actually the carbonic part will gradually become smaller and smaller in its uh, size and disappear just exactly as it happens in a liquid plus vapor to liquid homogenization in a biphase inclusion. So, this carbonic phase will shrink or will de decrease in its size this will happen because of the increased mutual solubility of carbon dioxide and water amongst themselves. So, exactly the same thing will happen it this towards just around the time of uh, the liquid the carbon dioxide liquid which it is substantially decreased in its size it will also execute a vigorous pseudo Brownian movement and will disappear at the point uh, at a temperature this temperature at which it, is, it disappears at 275 degree Celsius will say that this has undergone a total homogenization or T total T total. So, we can say that this is so now situation is that in all the cases it may not be that it is a homogenization to uh, T total to uh, liquid part. So, we say that this here this uh, homogenization is so the homogenization is L aqueous plus L carbonic to L aqueous means it is homogenized to an aqueous phase. The other situation is also possible means the car this carbonic part which is shown here may also expand in its volume and fill up the cavity fully and that could have been a situation where L aqueous plus L carbonic to L carbonic. We will discuss the situation uh, little later. Now, so here what actually I have missed in the discussion I will now try to fill that up. As we know this carbon dioxide has a very unique uh, carbon dioxide and water or these gases like carbon dioxide and methane they do have unique property of uh, absorbing more water molecules and forming something which is called as the hydrates gas hydrate or so, in case of carbon dioxide they are called the clathrate 
and there is the carbon dioxide cloth rate. So, the composition could be something very roughly CO2 6 H 2 O sometimes you can see it is 5.7 H 2 O 6 H 2 O sometimes there are uh, the stoichiometry is also differently put in sometimes even could be 8 H 2 O. So, the fact is that the carbon dioxide component here can absorb can you know, can combine with the water molecule in a ratio of 1 is to 6 nearly and can form the solid which is the hydrate the clathrate which is known as the clathrate. cloth rate. So, what is expected here that this cloth rate when when the temperature is being decreased from room temperature to any lower temperature. So, this carbon dioxide in combination with this water is supposed to form the cloth rate from temperature which is in the positive range of 10 degrees or even lower. So, it is not exactly very easy to pinpoint all the time when exactly the cloth rate is forming because the cloth rate is a is a colorless white uh, solid and it will always get uh, masked with the frozen characteristic of the liquid or the freezing of this liquid part. But it is most likely that even also the, the kind of laboratory experiments which we are doing where we are cooling at a much uh, higher rate in the, in the heating freezing apparatus. It might be that uh, it would also be a kinetic factor in which the hydrate may be just forming on the contact of the on the meniscus on the liquid and uh, carbon the two liquids or could have also if this particular uh, when we are seeing a system where there is already carbon dioxide in water and we know the room temperature solubility of carbon dioxide in water is about 2.3 mole percent. So, some dissolved carbon dioxide is also there. So, whether they also do form the uh, hydrate or not it is not very well known that is also very difficult to uh, know in a normal microthermometric experiments. So, now what we could basically can can have is that at around when the situation I am talking about when the situation is such that the last ice has melted in the aqueous part. So, the last ice in the so one 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 of the important implication here is that if the carbon dioxide has uh, taken up water in a proportion of 1 is to 6. So, this particular aqueous liquid will be depleted with respect to water or in other words the salt concentration will be apparently more in this liquid when some water molecule has been. So, depending on what uh, how broad or how thick a zone of cloth rate is forming here or whether this entire liquid is forming a cloth rate it is not known because if the entire liquid has formed a cloth rate then at the temperature corresponding to say around minus 100 when this carbon dioxide is solidifying it must be then releasing the water because it is a solid carbon dioxide without any water in it. So, to the best of uh, the, 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 the best expected at this moment it could be that may be that the cloth rate forms at some kind of an interface boundary to a forming a layer and the rest uh, in the amount any amount of water to come through that barrier will also be uh, difficult only when if it is kept at a much lower temperature for a very long time maybe the entire material might become cloth rate. But in a microthermometric experiment what would be expected is and even if the cloth rate is formed this part of the carbon dioxide has solidified and this phase change is so significant and so conspicuous that it will not be missed by anybody when the carbon dioxide solid forms. It forms with a very uh, it is significant and also the carbon dioxide solid is a distinctly white solid. So, now when at this point of minus 5 this part uh, this aqueous part has undergone the last ice melting. So, what remains here is a combination of vapor carbon dioxide, liquid carbon dioxide, cloth rate and the li aqueous liquid. So, it is kind of a four phase uh, assemblies we can tell. So, now what happens the cloth rate melts at say the cloth rate as we will see now at this cloth rate uh, carbon dioxide cloth rate uh, for a pure now if this if this particular water is pure water then this cloth rate would melt at 10 degree Celsius. If the water contents uh, electrolyte like sodium chloride to variable percentage then the cloth rate melting is depressed which we will just see in the next diagram. So, what will happen here is that at 8.5 degree Celsius 
this diffuse boundary will become very conspicuously a very clear boundary with now because of the depending on the uh, size of the vapor and the liquid in the carbon dioxide part we see that at least this this particular liquid liquid meniscus will get back to its original sharp nature compared to kind of a diffused and distorted uh, meniscus boundary when clothet was there and then rest of the thing which uh, we have already discussed okay so this uh, phase diagram uh, is uh, can be the easy one to actually understand we can uh, there are many more uh, such uh, later work which uh, people can refer to but to begin with this is a very uh, the diagram which can be very easily understood this particular region here is the clathrate stability this is the carbon dioxide liquid vapor curve it's a critical point of carbon dioxide one is for liquid and two is for vapor now this is the clathrate stability and we see the temperature corresponding to temperature which is shown here is 10 degrees celsius over here so we see that if it's carbon dioxide if the if the water is pure so here this corresponds to that particular four phase assemblage in which we have an aqueous liquid carbonic liquid clathrate and aqueous uh, uh, carbonic liquid carbonic vapor uh, then aqueous liquid and clathrate here it will melt so that uh, this 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 curve uh, which goes from here to here uh, goes up to the ternary eutectic which is almost about minus 20 or so Temp uh, the carbon dioxide water and uh, uh, NaCl so now if it contains uh, uh, this uh, this zero this uh, line this uh, this curve is essentially is the depression of clathrate dissolution or cloth clathrate melting uh, depression in the clathrate melting with increasing uh, concentration of sodium chloride these two dotted uh, curves represent the suppose this point if exactly at this point the clathrate would melt at something less than 10 less and less and less and less till the uh, with increasing concentration of sodium chloride and can go to the value of almost minus 20. So, theoretically the clathrate can melt at pure uh, aqueous liquid pure aqueous carbonic uh, situation where the clathrate could melt at 10 degrees Celsius depending on the 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 weight percent NaCl in the aqueous part the clathrate melting can get depressed can go up to a maximum minimum of minus 20 corresponding to the ternary eutectic to almost about 19 20 percent uh, NaCl. So, uh, now we can realize that it will not be advisable to calculate the uh, salinity of the aqueous phase from the last ice melting in the aqueous phase because that, will, that is going to give us the uh, erroneous value for the salinity of the aqueous phase. And since there is a well defined uh, if we could see it from here then this is the this top uh, curve is the clathrate dissolution curve the CDC and this is the ice melting curve. As you could see the ice melting curve goes to about 23 or so at the eutectic temperature of minus, uh, minus 20, uh, 21.2 and here the clathrate dissolution starts from 10 and goes and gets depressed and goes to can go to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So, uh, then what one needs uh, if we if, if we are to uh, calculate the, uh, the density the volumetric properties of the this mixed aqueous uh, carbonic fluid then we need to determine the, the salinity of the aqueous phase. So, the salinity of the aqueous phase uh, from the clathrate dissolution temperature is also fitted as an empirical equation with uh, this A0, A1 and A2 term being worked out. So, WNACL this T is the temperature of melting of clathrate. So, then here the situation is that we must have uh, this uh, this particular uh, point this particular point also uh, gives a condition that this clathrate melting uh, the the dissolution in the clathrate melting or the depression in clathrate melting can only be used if it is a four phase assemblage that is vapor carbonic vapor carbon dioxide liquid carbon dioxide clathrate and aqueous liquid now the situation if we if we are in the vapor stability field in this uh, region 2 there we will miss the aqueous uh, the carbon liquid part so the, that means if the temperature of home partial temp partial homogenization temperature of 
Now, this, this equation of calculating the cloth rate or the weight percent NaCl of the aqueous part from cloth rate dissolution temperature is applicable if Th CO2 is greater than Tm cloth rate. Means, the situation which we uh, described here that the cloth rate has melted here but the vapor is present. So, this, this is the condition in which uh, it is satisfied and we can calculate the salinity of the aqueous component from the temperature of dissolution of the cloth rate. But if the temperature of homogenization of carbon dioxide, the partial homogenization is less than that of temperature of dissolution of cloth rate, then we have to look for different formulations. Like in this particular one, if you put uh, T is equal to 10, you will definitely get WNSL is equal to 0. So, now uh, may see that the microthermometric parameters that, that are retrievable from the microthermometric experiments on aqueous carbonic inclusion that we have to we get the TMCO2 temperature of melting of the solid ice we designate as TMCO2 and the temperature of melting of cloth rate is TM cloth. The THCO2 is the partial homogenization of the carbonic phase either to liquid or to vapor and depending on whether the homogenization is to the liquid phase we can calculate the density or uh, using the formulations that we saw before applicable for the liquid phase homogenization and also for vapor phase homogenization and this T total is the temperature of total homogenization. Now, the one of the, uh, the thing to remember here is that these uh, mixed aqueous carbonic inclusions uh, are a bit difficult type of inclusions because in most of the cases we generally fail to get the total homogenization temperature. What we have depicted here the total homogenization temperature either to a L aqueous L carbonic to L aqueous because the mutual solubility of carbon dioxide and water is very much pressure dependent. So, the uh, it would require higher and higher pressure for the dissolution this uh, carbonic phase and aqueous phase to homogenize to give one liquid. And since the it all depends again on the, the, the power to for the host minerals to withstand the pressure as in case of a quartz it can we at a maximum, maximum withstand a pressure of 2 kilo bar. And so, what happens is that in most of the cases in case of larger inclusions the, the these inclusions they generally leak they generally decrepitate or burst partially leak before the total homogenization is obtained. In most of the cases they actually get completely leaked and they do not come back to their uh, original position at all. So, uh, these, uh, these are the uh, things that uh, to begin with these are the important uh, aspects of this even so even though they are, uh, they are the most uh, studied one and in terms of the, the system this aqueous carbon this water carbon dioxide and NHCl system has been extensively studied and it is still being studied to understand the emissibility regime and to, uh, to uh, refine the formulations for utilization of the microthermometric parameter in terms of uh, thermobarometry which we will uh, have a look in the subsequent uh, class in the next class. Thank you very much.